Welcome back. Today, we're finally looking at creating a state machine. If you're new here, we are creating an entire third person controller from scratch. However, this state machine section could easily be watched standalone. So if you want to learn how to make a full third person controller, or you just want to learn more about state machines, then this is perfect for you. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to get access to the entire course right away, then you can become a channel member or join the Patreon. Every episode will be immediately accessible. Don't want a monthly subscription? You can buy the course outright over on my Udemy. Links in the description. Let's get into it. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. We've got our camera working and we've got all the different actions that we might want to use in the future and a really good way of being able to expand on that if we ever need to. But now we need to start looking at movement and uh, potentially adding a character with animations and all those kind of things. And then finally, we're going to move on to like actually shooting and like combat, right? And we sort of have to start looking at this as um, how do we build up to this? Because uh, we've got a character with movement and we're going to have a fairly complex model that has all of the different uh, actions in place. Uh, so how can we control all of that? I have uh, the an example here finished where we might have a character that can run and has like all the different leg movements. You can see the legs will change direction based on like the inputs from the keyboard. Uh, when you jump, you play an animation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, even when you sprint, for example, the animation will change and we'll do different things based on that. How can we build up to this with the current setup? And the answer is, and you might've guessed it from looking at the side, is a state machine. Now, what is a state machine? A finite state machine is a fundamental design pattern that allows us to separate our actions into a finite number of individual states. In this model, there will be a current state and any given number of inputs will transition us into another state. So the states are separate and can't be called upon unless they're the active state. We're going to be using one to control all the actions of our movement, uh, but they're a powerful tool that can be used in a wide range of applications well beyond even game dev. Consider our capsule character right now. If we break it down into a number of individual actions, we could probably break it into a number of different states. First, we've got our starting state, uh, which is idle, right? The character's not doing anything. It's just waiting for other inputs. And then we might press an input like W and the character will be moving, which could be another state. And we'll also have jump, right? Which is when we press the space key, the character is going to jump. And then obviously after the jump comes the fall, uh, which happens whenever we are in the air, but we're not jumping, right? So like, uh, I mean, it's easy to say that it's all jump, right? But obviously we don't have any like platforms here, but we could potentially in a game, you're just walking off the edge of something and transition into a full state, right? Um, so we could probably draw a map of all these different states and it would look a little bit like this. Um, so using a state machine allows us to write cleaner code that's easier to maintain and understand for like way less effort. Right now, if we look at the code that runs our movement, it's fairly simple, right? Um, so we've got the, you know, if not a four, we're going to do a uh, falling, right? That's essentially our falling state. And then this is the input action for the jump. And obviously this is our movement, right? We're just scanning for inputs. But what if we wanted to add more actions, right? We wanted to sprint, dodge, crouch. We'd have to add um, a bunch of checks onto each step of the process to figure out what our current input is and various other actions. So this is a an example here. This is my first person shooter template, which you can get on the Godot asset library. Now for the player character, I intentionally didn't use a state machine. And you can see there's obviously a large number of different variables for all the different movements and different things that you can do. And then if we go down to input, we can say that like, uh, if, if crouched, um, if enable lean, if enable sprint, right? And then um, when, when we're pressing sprint, as long as we're not crouched, we can sprint, right? So you have to add and then walk as well, right? So like, you know, you have a lot of additional checks that you need to do, a lot of functions, um, even in the uh, movement, uh, in, the, in the physics process, we're doing if crouched, if crouch blocked, if action just press, so this is the same exact jump code, but look, I have to say if jump available, if crouched, else 
you know, uh, a lot of additional checks that you have to do to make this still work in a single thing. And this does work for the record. This is fine. It's just a lot of extra effort. And if I wanted to add like additional movement, I would probably be in a pretty difficult situation. Like what if I wanted to add a, 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 a dodge or anything like that, then I don't, I don't think it would be possible, um, especially for games. Like if you wanted to make something of a Metrovania or um, anything where you're getting abilities and power-ups, you need to have a state machine because you can't just keep writing different if and else checks for all the different things that you might have or not have or be able to do in that given moment. So uh, a state machine is definitely necessary getting beyond this point, I would say. Anytime you consider, I would say probably more than four actions, then you're going to start to need a state machine. Um, if all you wanted was uh, walk and jump, then maybe it's okay, but you know, that's you. Uh, okay, with states, uh, we can separate each action and define a transition condition. We can rest assured that once we're in that state, we know exactly what can and can't happen. For example, say I don't want the player to enter an aim state while we're sprinting. Well, that's really easy. When we're in the sprint state, I can simply not have an input or transition to that state rather than having to write lengthy if condition. So we can see that in action in the third person shooter here, the completed project. Um, I can aim, right? That's fine, but when I'm sprinting, I can no longer aim. And that is made possible because of the state machine. So that is why we use a state machine. It's gonna look end up looking something a little bit like this. We can add a state as a boost, for example. It's something you might wanna change, take away and add as your player grows in power or anything like that. Um, we'll have basics. You got your idle run, sprint, jump, fall, boost, all of that, all right? So that is what we're going to be making in this next section. Um, it's a really powerful tool. It's really powerful to know for game development. It's going to really extend uh, your ability to make interesting and diverse characters and give them uh, a lot of different actions and be able to control your animations as well. Because one of the reasons that we're doing this, even though this character doesn't have that many, it makes controlling the animations significantly easier because we can simply emit a signal, um, animation state updated, emit run. When we enter that state, and that can update what the animation player does, right? And so we're going to work on the state machine first and then add the uh, character second, right? We'll add this, um, this 3D model after and sort of use the state machine to build up our movement and different animation sets that we can action upon. Okay, let's get into it. All right, guys, that's all for this episode. I hope you found it helpful. Next week, we're going to be looking at creating the state part of the state machine. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to get access to every episode of this series, then you should become a channel member or join the Patreon. If you don't want to pay the monthly fee, you can always buy the course on Udemy. Other than that, I'll see you all next week.